Hi, my name is Kurt Creeley and welcome to Tech Talk. I'm a partner with the Tampa office of the law firm of Foley & Lardner. Foley & Lardner is a large national law firm that has a variety of practice areas. My practice area focuses on representing companies in a variety of transactional matters, including mergers and acquisitions, corporate finance transactions such as angel and venture capital financing, as well as public offerings, and also representing companies in a variety of other corporate matters. During Tech Talk, we discussed the issue of granting equity to employees and independent contractors of early stage companies. Most early stage companies do indeed expect at some point to grant equity to either employees or independent contractors or both. Why do companies grant equity to employees and independent contractors? Well, they do it primarily to align the interests of the employees and independent contractors with those of the company. And in fact, most early stage employees and, and independent contractors who play a significant role with the company expect to get some form of equity. So the question for a startup or an early stage company is, well, do I grant equity? How much do I grant? And what are the various circumstances and terms and provisions that I should implement whenever I grant equity? The first question we always tell our clients is, do you really want to grant equity? Uh, and in some cases, you may, as a practical matter, need to grant equity. And of course, equity is stock in a corporation, membership interest in an LLC, or options or rights to purchase either stock or membership interest. Whenever we grant or whenever we advise companies as to the granting of equity, we often ask them, well, is there a better alternative than the granting equity? I mean, might you consider granting bonuses? Uh, or you could grant what's called phantom equity. And phantom equity is merely a contract right that ties uh, the value of a bonus to the appreciation in the company's equity. And uh, despite advising clients of the possibility of granting phantom equity, it often turns out that they want to grant actual stock or actual membership interest or options. So the next step is if you do want to grant equity, how do you do it? How much do you grant to employees? What are the terms of the grant? What does the contract look like? In terms of how much you grant to employees, unfortunately there's no right answer to that question. Uh, it's often a matter of negotiation between the employee and the company and often it ends up being uh, a completely arbitrary number. Uh, sometimes there are benchmarks out there that companies can use in terms of the amount of equity they should grant, but uh, the, the principle is that there is no principle involved in granting equity in the amount involved. Uh, next, the question is, how do you grant it? What form of equity do you grant? Do you grant options? Do you grant actual shares of stock? Well, that's also kind of a tricky question because it has some significant tax implications, and that is if you grant shares or membership interests directly to employees, they may be taxed on that. So uh, unfortunately, you need to do uh, a little bit of discussion with your attorney or your tax advisor and figure out how can we grant this in a way that won't result in a material tax impact to the employee at the time of grant. Most employees aren't interested in paying taxes on equity or options that they don't have any liquidity on. Uh, so what companies typically try to do is grant it in a way that will minimize the tax impact on the, uh, on the recipient. And the way that's often done is granting options that are priced at fair market value or in an LLC, what's called a, uh, a profits interest. So the next question then we typically ask clients is, well, we know we're going to grant equity. How much? What price? Uh, what vesting or forfeiture conditions do we attach to it? Uh, vesting or forfeiture conditions are essentially conditions or restrictions that state uh, if the employee doesn't stay with the company for a specific amount of time or if they don't achieve certain performance milestones, then they don't get their equity. Uh, that's something that needs to be negotiated up front and included directly in the agreement. What you don't want to do is grant equity to employees or independent contractors who, and then who run away to Costa Rica without doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, so that the forfeiture investing restrictions need to be included directly in the equity grant. Uh, the next step is, well, what happens if equity does vest and the employee or the independent contractor goes AWOL? You always want some right to buy back the equity, even if it's for some appraised fair market value, but you typically want some mechanism to get that equity back. 
And so that's, uh, that's one of the final things that you need to make sure that you employ, include in employee equity agreements. So these are the issues and considerations that startups and early stage companies need to consider when granting equity to employees and independent contractors. I hope you enjoyed this Tech Talk and see you at future Tech Talks. Thanks.